Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the solid doctor using this clip model here. And uh, if I just select my solid and activate it, then I'll open the solid doctor. You can see we've got some faults with our part. Now the first thing that you should always do is attempt automatic repair. Let power shape do the work for you. And you can see here that one of our faults has been repaired, and it's this gap here. So that's all good. So now what we should do is recheck and see if there are any other problems. Okay, so we've still got these two. We've got a large hole here. And I can see that actually that is just a face that's missing uh, from the part. And there's two ways that I could fix this. I could select that hole and choose fill hole with tangential surface. If I select that, you can see that PowerShape has simply filled in my hole with a curved surface. Now this works just fine for this model, but what we can also do, which would be useful to know, is because this part is symmetrical, we can use this surface here. So I'm going to extract surfaces and edit them. As I select that surface, this is immediately selected from the drop down. I'm going to select OK. You can see now that this surface has been extracted and isolated from the model. So I'm just going to go to the general edits and mirror that over the Y, across the model. I'm going to select OK. And close that form. So you can see, now my surface has been mirrored over to the other side. I can select everything in my model and say OK to the doctor edit. And my solid doctor dialog shows that my fault has been repaired. So I'm going to refresh that again. And I've still got this trimming problem here. So what I'm going to do is select both of these and extract surfaces and edit them. And then I'm just going to work on this right one here. So I'm going to just keep that one there and we'll zoom in. And uh, I'll just zoom into this bit here. And you can see that we've got this very tiny slither of a surface. And that's what PowerShape doesn't like. It's too thin. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to do that by using the trim region editing mode. So I'm going to enter that mode. Just move that toolbar over here. I can select all of my boundaries and explode them. You can see that my surface goes back to its original shape, this rectangle here. And now I'm going to recreate my boundaries. And I just trace around my shape. When I get to this point here, instead of going straight over and jumping the gap, I'm going to go around this circle and around like this. And then I'm going to save that and eject. So now when I zoom into this area here, you can see that rather than having a thin slither of, uh, of a surface, it just ends and we've got a little tiny gap. So that's much better for PowerShape to deal with. So I'm going to show everything else. And then I'm going to delete this surface. I could have added to that surface too and remodeled it. Uh, but what, I, what is simpler is just to select this surface, go to my general edits, and mirror across. I'm going to select OK and close that. And then I'm going to select my whole entire model and say OK. You can see my faults have been repaired. I'm going to recheck that. All my faults have been fixed. OK, so that's lovely. Next, what I'm going to do, i just turn that layer off, turn on my radiator layer. 
Okay, we can see we've got this part here. I'm going to activate my solid. If I wanted to use direct modeling to remove this kind of chimney shape here, I could do that by just selecting all of the surfaces involved and then pressing remove and heal. But when I do that, I'm going to get this error. This operation is not implemented for version 8 solids. Now, what this means is that this part was created in an early version of PowerShell, earlier than uh, 2010, before PowerSolids were developed. So what I need to do is convert this version 8 solid into a PowerSolid. So I'll do this by selecting my, um, my part and pressing Convert to PowerSolid. In this conversion, we're going to get a few problems. So we get this uh, command prompt. Do you want to fix the faults in your solid? Yes. This is going to bring up the solid doctor. And list the problems in our um, part. So the first thing that you should always do is attempt automatic repair. We can see that large faulty faces, four of those have been fixed for us. So we're letting Parashape do the hard work. So I'm going to recheck. And I'm going to select these overlaps here. So my faces are overlapping. I'm going to zoom into that and take a closer look. And here I can see that my fillet overlaps with these surfaces here and that's happening all the way around my model. So what I'm going to do is uh, set my overlaps, extract surfaces and edit them. I want to make sure that I've got every single surface that's involved so that's including these ones here, so I'll shift select these and then I can extract them. I'm just going to blank everything else so we can see what we're working on. And I'll turn on my edges so I can see clearly that my fillet overlaps my vertical edge, my vertical surface there. So I'm going to Alt and select this line to create a composite curve around there. And then I'm just going to view from the side. With my composite curve selected, I'll go to my general edits and uh, go to the limit selection. And then I'm just going to select all of these surfaces here. That's not what I wanted to crop, so I'm going to do next solution. And we can see now that our, our fillet and our surface has been trimmed, so they do not no longer overlap. <clears throat> and I'll select this composite curve and delete it. And then I'm going to show everything. I'll select all surface and solids. I'm going to say OK. And we can see that our overlaps have been fixed, all 13 of them. So I'm going to recheck again. I've oh, still got a couple of problems. I'm going to select these gaps and have a look what's going on there. So I'll just zoom into this area. We can see here, we've got these little tiny gaps, there's two of them, one on either side. And I can choose from the drop down, fill gap with non-tangential surface. That's just going to fill my hole with a flat, flat surface. So those have been fixed, I'm going to recheck again. And I've got a hole here. 
So I'm going to extract the surfaces around the hole and edit them. So I can fix this problem with the hole where these surfaces don't join. So I'll say OK. Blank everything else. So I want to recreate this surface here. I'll go to my curves, create a composite curve. I'll put a stop point in here. I'm going to start tracing around this top edge. My line's gone too far. So I'm just going to go backwards and that ends at the right place and say OK and eject. So I can delete these surfaces now. I'm going to select this and recreate uh, a new surface. I'm going to extrude that down. Just pull that down so it's longer than my cutting surface here. Then I'm going to go back to my general edits and limit selection. I'm going to select this surface here as the cutting object. And I want to trim this region here. So that looks okay to me. I'm going to show everything. I'm going to select all my surfaces and solids. And I'm going to say okay. So we fixed that problem and now we've got a gap. So I'm just going to recheck. And yet we've got overlap and gaps. So fixing that problem has actually created another. But that's not nothing to worry about. We can uh, attempt automatic repair and see if PowerShape can fix it for us. Yes, it can. So I'm going to recheck again. All of my faults have been fixed. So I can finish that. And now, when I right-click my solid, no longer says version 8 solid, it's just a solid. So I've successfully converted it to a parasolid. And then if I want to do direct modeling to this part, I can remove this chimney by selecting these surfaces. Start again. make sure I've got them all and then remove and heal. I also need to select this surface here and remove and heal this. I just change the viewing mode and I've got rid of this chimney and that's what I aim to do.